they say live every day as if it's your last. Quite honestly, the pain I have in my back makes me sometimes think this could be my last day and what would I still want to have said before I go. Now, you know, inside I actually believe I'm going to live another 30 years. My mother just died at the age of 93 and my grandmothers both lived to be over 90 and I'm quite convinced that I'm also going to live that long, which is why I also determined to have my knee operation so that I can be a little bit more mobile in the third stage of my life. And yet after the second knee operation, I had this excruciating back pain, which has recurred now almost a year after the second knee operation. And I'm still dealing with it. And I'm really challenged. I'm really challenged. And my challenge is to focus on, on the positive things, on the good things, and not to be consumed by the pain. And that is so hard. And it's so easy for us to judge others for what they don't do, what they could be doing better. And I'm very good at that. I'm very good at seeing what could be improved. And so if you need an, an, an analyst, somebody who can give you some positive tips, I'm the one. Ask me. I can show you how to improve things. I'll always find something. <laughs> whether it's proofreading a document, even in the German text, I'll often find a mistake. And even though my specialty is more proofreading the English translations that have been done based on the German text. And I'm working on, on so many things. This week I attended the inaugural meeting of the... Actually, it wasn't an inaugural meeting, it was an extraordinary general assembly of the faith-based organizations, which was established two years ago here in Vienna and is based in New York. And it was the extension of the executive to fulfill the requirements of the Austrian Association right Board so that it is now a registered association here with all, all the legal requirements for Austria. And they included, added a few people from various faiths, which I think is just so wonderful. It so expresses the ideal that I've been living according to for so, so many years. It just warmed my heart to see significant people speaking my ideals and my values. And I thought of all the years that I that I thought sometimes I was I was living in secret and yet I'm being confronted exposed to so many wonderful women and other people who have had this internal conviction values oriented above denominations interdenominational in German you might almost I think you would use the word uber confessionnel meaning it doesn't matter about the religion. And my concern, especially the, the 2009, I started working at the IAEA. Before that, I was an NGO representative for Women's Federation. And I've always been concerned that my faith organization and many interdenominational or ecumenical movements focus on the faith aspect. And at the UN, I was confronted with many people who had no faith, who did not believe in God. And I wanted to extend the borders to those beyond faith. And, and yet the conviction is there. The God, the love, the universe, the energy, it doesn't matter what you call it. Allah, Buddha, uh, Confucius, uh, Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus. It doesn't matter what your name is for God, the eternal being, the energy, the love, the core of the universe. We are connected. We are one human family. I, 
I know that. And as my husband likes to say, I don't believe in God. I have a relationship with God. God is in me. I am God. I know God. I don't have to believe in God because it's it's a part of the universe. I am a part of God. I'm a part of the universe. And it's this recognition, conviction of faith that inspires me and why was it so hard to speak that out? Yeah, because we are a secular society, we don't proselytize, we don't talk about religion at Toastmasters in public, at the UN. So we talk about all sorts of other things. So we have universal values, we believe in interdependence in mutual prosperity so they're my values that's what I'm selling myself with as a virtual assistant online management assistant promoting universal values mutual cooperation mutual interdependency and mutual prosperity because I know when we each give of ourselves and recognize the unique quality of every single person then we don't need to convince somebody else of our faith of the value of our life of what we're doing but we can embrace one another and appreciate what you're doing and see how it fits in and how we fit together and how we can extend each other complement one another and build that universe, that heavenly kingdom, heavenly parents, holy community that that is the, the vision, the ideal, the goal of each one of us. I just commented on a photo in Facebook which was over a report about a concept in Canada where orphanages and old people's homes are being combined and the astounding positive consequences of this development how orphans are finding family and old people are finding meaning for their life and I commented that that photo of that old lady with the baby reminded me of the last photo I have of my mother the day before her stroke and it goes beyond the the physical family, my mother, because we belong to the universe and we are all brothers and sisters. We all have our heavenly parent. We talk about Mother Earth, Father God. We are all brothers and sisters and Christians talk about brothers and sisters in Christ. Yet it's easy to draw a line and say, if you're not Christian, if you're not baptized, if you're not a Jew, if you're not a Muslim, you're excluded. I, I don't believe in that exclusion. I believe that there is one whole, universal whole, and we are all a part of it. And well, that's what I wanted to share now. So I don't know what else I should have said, but I wanted to just post something. So that's my comment for now. See you next time. <laughs>